Chu Vang has finally made it to phase three of his development in Johnson's Creek, which opens up these parcels for retail and residential development. The parcels offer excellent visibility from the interstate, making them ideal for retail, office, and even hotel uses. Fresh off from a very difficult development in Nicolet Bay, Heartland Development Group is hoping to rebound with what they feel will be a slam dunk of the development. They approach Chu with a proposal for a power center and a number of mid-rise apartments and condos to support the development. A power center is a shopping center made up primarily of anchor tenants, with 25% or less of the space that dedicated to smaller shops, most of which are generally national chains. Though this is similar to what was already approved as part of the plat and plan for this area, the reconfiguration requires an amendment to the Johnson's Creek Comprehensive Plan to adjust the mix of uses and their specific locations. And a comprehensive plan amendment requires a public hearing, which results in postcards being mailed to all property owners within a half mile or 800 meters of the proposed development. Residents in the Walnut Heights neighborhood all receive the mailings and organize to ensure as many homeowners as possible can attend the meeting. At the meeting, the residents state that they aren't opposed to the power center and aren't even opposed to the residential, just the proposed density of that residential. They recommend single-family homes instead of apartments and condos. Emily Carlson, CEO of Heartland Development, states that the development would add thousands of jobs to the area and that the housing must be approved with the rest of the development. Later that evening, as council members begin to signal support for the development, community members interrupt and speak loudly during the deliberations. The meeting drags on until 1 a.m., resulting in a vote to table the issue until next month's meeting. Council members see Chu and Emily in the hallway after the meeting and recommend that they find a compromise before the next meeting to appease the residents. Approval is far from certain and seeking some sort of compromise may change that. Chu and Emily hold meetings at the YMCA, suggesting a compromise of reduced density in the rest of Chu's lands in exchange for the proposed development. They also propose building a public plaza in the future as a concession, as well as capping the height of all the apartments and condos to five stories max. At the next council meeting, opposition is a fraction of what it was at the first meeting, and the project is quickly approved. In this episode, we're going to build this new power center and its supporting developments, significantly expanding the number of residents and jobs in Johnson's Creek. And in the last Dev Diary breakdown, a ton of you asked for more pictures of Banjo. So if you want to see more pictures of Banjo, hit the like button. And if you think I should be a cat fan, hit the like button for that too, and let me know how you feel in the comments. Or drop an emoji that lets me know how you feel for the sake of engagement. Without any further ado, let's jump right in. Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building Johnson's Creek in Clearwater County. And we've got a good one today. We're going to be building a huge shopping complex with a ton of custom assets. So let's jump into today's plan. We're going to begin by adjusting our roadway layout within this area. You might recall this area was set up for duplexes, single family homes, and maybe a grocery store. So we need to adjust this quite significantly. After we're done with that, we're going to begin with some hotels and office space. That'll go right about here. Then we'll move on to developing our power center, which will be right about here. And then after that, we'll fill in the remaining lands with residential. Then we'll landscape and detail the entire development before moving on to our city tour. So let's jump into modifying our roadway layout. For our roadway layout, we're going to try to stick with some elements from this previous plan and modify this to fit our new buildings. And I think that something like this may be ideal. Now, I do think that there might be some desire to mirror this pattern that we have here on Main Street coming into this area. So we are going to use our Create Parallel Mode and create one ways doing this exact same pattern. Now, it's going to be really important that we end this in a straight location so that it's easy to connect these into the existing roadway network. I'm going to tab these in a little bit. I want these to be fairly close to one another. Maybe we'll go 10 meters on this side, tab over. 10 meters on the other side. And then to make this simple for myself, I'm going to go into move it, use the picker in here, select just this yellow road. And now I can use the marquee selection to get rid of just that road. Now I'll grab this one, pull it back, do the exact same thing over here. And the goal is just to make some really easy connections right into here. And then to really clean this up, I'm going to upgrade this segment to a four lane road. I'll do the exact same thing here, though it will neck down very quickly as we approach the high school. And now we got to clean up the ends. So we'll go into node controller and just try to clean some of this up. And I've gone ahead and done a little bit of lane marking as well. I'm not sure how I feel about that yet, but it's better than it was before. I'm going to sever this connection because rather than having this come in at a weird angle like that, we're just going to extend this straight through. And I want to do the same thing with this one. I want to come in at a 90. 
And while we're over here, we'll adjust this side as well. And there we go. I'm still not sold. Something looks off to me here and I might adjust this, but for now that will be good enough. Now I want to create the parallel road that'll basically be the frontage road to this entire development. So we are going to pop into our road connections and add in one of our parking lot service roads. And I'm going to use the parallel road tool for this. This will probably be the edge of our development and we'll bring it all the way to here. Popping this about 30 meters back, I want to leave enough space for a bit of landscaping in between this road and the developments. And then I'm just going to extend these roads off into the abyss for the time being. Now let's pop over here and do the exact same thing where the hotels will go. This will be more or less where our entry and exit for this hotel and office area are. Now let's start laying out some of our uses here. Here's what we have, quite a few uses. This is a Home Depot. We've got an AMC Theater, Best Buy, Dick's Sporting Goods, Kroger, and a Walmart. We're gonna be adding a Walmart to this community. Right now, it's in the highway. It's a good spot for it. <laughs> so let's lay these out, and this is gonna be fairly simple. We'll come up here, and then the road is going to turn, and all of these other uses are gonna be behind the highway. We need to have enough room to have some sort of a freight access road. So I'm gonna draw that one on first and then we'll shuffle some of these uses back here. This road will also need to be able to go behind Home Depot. So for our first two uses, we have the AMC and the Best Buy. And the goal here is just to keep things as tight as possible. We're going to be using shared parking throughout this entire development. So we'll try to keep these fairly close to one another and we'll use move it to really line things up nicely. We're gonna use the network multi-tool to make most of the connections through here. Create curve mode can be really valuable if you wanna make these really simple connections, make them look really nice. And then for your more complex connections, you can use your create connection mode and do things like this. You can do a loop-de-loop -loop if you're that kind of person. <laughs> or you can try to do this. Now we'll move to this other side where we grab our Dick's Sporting Goods. And then we need a grocery store. That's something that we don't really have in this community. So we will grab this. This is one that I want to kind of shove way back here in the corner because we need enough space for Walmart. So that's going to really dictate the placement of Kroger. And I think something like this will work. We've added our outdoor living center right to the front here. And then we may, well, we we'll probably have to pull this forward a little bit, but we should be able to make this fit. And here I will use the create connection mode to actually loop behind the rear here. And now we'll add our service roads back here. So I will admit this would be a challenging development to get approved. Uh, just reasonably, the DOT is not going to love having a development this close to their interchange. That said, we will take a couple of liberties. It's a game. We can have a little bit of fun with it. And this is something that I could see being retrofitted in there if uh, an interchange were built after the fact. But if this were brand new, I, I assume that the DOT would put their foot down and try to reserve enough room for themselves if they ever wanted to expand in the future. And then for this side, you know, we've got this little bit of trouble here with this auto service location. I'm wondering if I just add a small little road right here. I think that does the trick. And then we'll use surface painter down the line to really take this to the next level. And now the last thing I want to do over here is really make sure that we have a nice connection into this hotel area. Let's make a couple of connections directly into this power center. So there's one way in and one way out, and we may adjust this as we need to, but I think for the most part, this is a fairly decent layout for this area. And with our roadway layout set, Let's get to placing our hotels in office space. Now in this section, rather than using all custom assets, we are gonna be using some of the hotels from the Hotels and Retreats DLC. So I'm gonna place some of those first because I want to get these to level up. I believe we have two hotels in this entire region, which means that we aren't gonna have many hotels unlocked. And indeed, we do not have some of the hotels I really want, like this city hotel, which will require a weekly profit of $5,000. So let's start working our way there. I think that we'll place a couple of these budget hotels or perhaps these small hotels. The two have 
requirements that are fairly similar. And I think I could probably make more money with the small hotel, but I think that the budget hotel probably fits the vibe of this place a little better. I'm gonna place two of these side by side. And reasonably, I'm doing that because I'm hoping that I can rotate these and holding down Alt, I'm trying to get these to line up nicely. It's not gonna play nice with me, so I will do it manually. Now I'm hoping to run some of these 22 meter parking lot pieces right down the side so we can create a parking field around these. This is kind of what I would expect to see in an area like this. This is an interstate hotel after all, and the folks that would be coming here would generally be passing through the area, not coming because this is an exceptionally nice place to visit. But it will have the amenities that you need, assuming you need a place to eat or something of that nature. Now we don't have power or water in this area. I'm going to see if I can jump the power. We'll just throw a transformer in, maybe right about here. And then we'll get some water pipes underneath our roads, right where they belong. There we go. And I tried to provide coverage in all places that I thought we'd be building in today, knowing that we are going to be building quite a bit of residential along this road. And we're gonna have some outlot development right along this road here. And obviously not a great location from a business standpoint, but I'm a little more surprised that they're not happy about the shopping proximity. I would have thought that that would have been better. And for this particular location, I have an idea. This is a tourism building. Maybe I'll just convert the Walmart Outdoor Living Center to be a commercial building. I'll just click on it and go into the Rico settings. I'll add a local and I want this to be commercial. We'll make this low density. And I'm gonna say that there are 10 employees that work here, nothing huge. Then we'll save and apply changes. And now this is immediately a commercial building. We'll probably have to click on it one more time. There we go. One worker. <laughs> you know, for whatever reason, it didn't take when I tried to adjust the worker count through Rico, but that's no problem. We can certainly change that within realistic population. So I'll just adjust that right here. Click on override population, change the number of jobs and update the settings and we will have more jobs here. It's not that we need the jobs. I just am concerned that we won't see a bump in our commercial unless we have that. So things are looking good from that front. Let's place a, an office building now. And I want Rico office buildings. I want them to be custom. So now I'm basically saying office buildings that are so large that I have to place them using Rico. They can't grow in. And now I'm going to narrow this down even more. I want this to be a larger building. So I'm saying it covers at least five to eight wide. And that gives me some of these BB offices. And I really like these ones. We actually use these in the downtown area, but we have this one BB office too that we have not used. Now this is important to me because the ones in the downtown area have been adjusted to carry state workers. And I think that there's like a thousand employees or something crazy like that. I don't want a thousand employees right here. 422 is already a lot. I don't know that we're gonna be able to meet this, uh, but we'll give it a shot. And then once again, we'll add in this larger parking lot. And I wanna make sure that the front of the building is facing this parking lot. That's an easy fix. We'll just go into building spawn points and it's easy to see that we have this facing the wrong way. The arrow was on this side. So I'll just spin it around. Now this should have yeah, completely maxed out our business need here. So that gets us to 78%, which isn't quite good enough, but I think we might actually be able to top this out with some of our commercial buildings that we'll place along here. And I'll place a couple of those if I have to, but I wanna place another office. So I've added this building, which is called the Community Center. This is a lovely asset by Senfgorn. I, and I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. I'm deeply sorry, but it is an absolutely beautiful Community Center asset. And I think that it works well for offices as well. It operates as an office, has 140 workers, which is kind of funny considering how many this one has, but I think we will accept it. Now for this along the rear, I'm gonna tuck some parking behind. And honestly, this is gonna cause me to bump this road back a little bit, which is not a big deal. And honestly, I kinda of like this. We have to have some important acknowledgements sometimes that buildings normally, this, they sometimes will conform to the roadway network, but in a new development, it's actually the exact opposite. The roadway network will often conform to the building itself. So that we have this building in place and our parking fits, let's copy these hotels. So I've selected these and move it. I'm gonna control C these. 
and we'll paste these right here. They are thrilled about their proximity to office and honestly nature, which is kind of surprising to me, but they are very unhappy about their proximity to shopping. So we will add a couple of shopping mall assets. And the way that we'll do that is I'm gonna show some extra filter panels and we're gonna go to required DLC or content creator pack. We'll narrow this down to shopping malls. Now I've stayed at these sorts of interstate side hotels in the past. And the thing that kind of unites all of them is the ability to walk to something, even if it's in a fairly inhospitable pedestrian environment. So we will have that here. And at least we're giving people some options. And the thing that I love so much about these assets are that you can really pull them close together and make them look absolutely outstanding. This seems like it's just one big building now, and that's what we wanted. And the net result is 100% popularity. <laughs> this is the very best hotel in all of uh, Clearwater County, apparently. Hasn't helped these at all, but that's okay. I do really want at the end to have some of the signature hotels of this entire region. So what I'm gonna do is fudge things a little bit for just a moment. And we're gonna place down some of these the outlot sorts of assets that we'd have over here just a couple of them so i've added a culver's and a burger king right here and we're going to add a whole bunch of these sorts of uses along the outside but it hasn't really fully moved the needle but i have one more thing that we could do i'm going to pull this building closer to this frontage road and on this side let's add something special There we go. I've just added a little gazebo and a tiny park with a pond here. And this should help us with our sightseeing. And it looks like for one of the hotels, it has helped us. So this one, we are basically maxed out and this one, we are not. So we will do something I don't love doing. We're going to fudge this and look at, I placed these three hotels and they are thrilled. Well, not this one. <laughs> this one's not thrilled, but the rest of them are thrilled. For this one, I think it's so happy at 100%. I can likely crank this all the way to the top and I will just eliminate this one that is unhappy. And now if I look at these, my profit is hovering just around 5,000. Now it's just over. So it's just a waiting game at this point. And there we go. We have unlocked our next hotels, including the ones that I really wanted to unlock in the first place. So I will eliminate these inns, even though they're making a ton of money. Crazy location for them. And we'll place a couple of these city hotels. I really love these ones. They're my favorite hotels out of all of them. And I just think that they generally look very, very nice. Though I think that this is probably a bit tall. We'll go with one of the stubby wide ones. That is wonderful. I love those. I love those so much. And if we look at them, unhappy with our proximity to offices. Oh boy. You just can't win sometimes with these. So what I think I'll do. Just simply made some room for this hotel. Sliding everything over. Because I really care more about these than those other hotels anyway. And it loves its location. This is the perfect spot for the city hotel. And since we have the perfect spot for this one, why don't we also place one of these over here, get rid of these little baby ones, and move this one over here, and it is unhappy. <laughs> well, at least we have space now because I eliminated one of those parking facilities to add more to this area if we want to. And interestingly, just pulling this forward help the sightseeing score. I'm not gonna worry about this shopping. I do think it will improve. Oh my goodness. Would you believe what's in this area? There's a marching army of Phillips with two L's. We should check them out and see what they're up to. You notice how sad Philip looks? He just stayed at the New City Hotel, and while he was there, connected to the open public Wi-Fi and used it to check his bank account. Sadly for Philip, Shirley was using a packet sniffer and stole his login credentials, and she spent all of his money. Now, Philip is gonna have a long walk home since he can no longer afford the train ticket he was gonna purchase to get back to Ashland. And all of this could have been avoided if Philip would have taken my advice and checked out today's video sponsor, NordVPN. NordVPN provides a fast and secure internet connection wherever you are in the world with over 5,800 servers in 60 countries across the globe. And you can use NordVPN on nearly any device out there. Whether you're using Windows, Mac OS, Linux, Android, iOS, you can experience the safety, security, and speed of using NordVPN. But it's not just about security. Using NordVPN, you'll be able to access region locked content from around the world. I've got hooked in this British show called Taskmaster. And while most of the seasons are available on YouTube, the most recent season is only available on Channel 4. 
which is not available outside of the UK. Using NordVPN, I'm able to watch from any device, including my laptop and Chromecast. Philip is still walking and has been listening to me sing NordVPN's praises. He's convinced and is going to sign up as soon as he gets home. And Philip is lucky because NordVPN is having a back to school sale where you can save big and get extra months of service for free. Get this exclusive NordVPN deal here at nordvpn.com slash cityplanner. It's risk free with NordVPN's 30 day money back guarantee. Thanks again to NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to it. Next, let's finish development of our power center. So we have all of our anchor tenants now, but we have to figure out their parking. And I know this is going to be a controversial one. People don't like parking and they think that planners are the reason why there's tons of parking. And in some cases there is. But in many, it's actually the banks and these anchor tenants. And it's really frustrating because oftentimes planners are actually now pushing for less parking. But these businesses, they believe that they need all this parking. So we're going to give them parking that is roughly one and a half times bigger than the building itself. Particularly buildings like this one, the Home Depot, they're going to want a ton of parking. Maybe do something like this. So. I want to give each of these businesses their own parking. They are going to own their lots individually. And as a result of that, the lots need to make some reasonable sense. And I think this is more or less what I'm going to go with. The Walmart parking is still probably a bit smaller than they would like it to be. And we may need to compensate for that. Now that we have this, though, let's get to adding our parking. And because we are using parking lot roads, we're just going to use some of these filler pieces. Now I selected all of the nodes in the parking lot and I hit align them up. Now what this will help me do is basically completely make these even. So I'm going to move it. I select all the nodes that I want to line up, line up the objects. Now these should be in the same spot. So I should be able to grab that center node, hold down alt and just pull it into place. Easy as pie, except for this one. This one's upset. No problem. We just go into node controller. And if we make this a middle, it should fix it. There we go. Perfectly even. So we're going to do this throughout the rest of the lots and then we will add our parking stalls. It was really a struggle to get these to look right. And they probably don't look right to you yet, but we can easily get these to be right. I'm just going to change some of this to have middle. So now it feels like there's likely enough. It's facing the shopping center that it belongs to. And you can almost see where this parcel would be. These other ones should be sick significantly more straightforward, but these two in particular were very challenging. Okay, I think this is our parking facility. It took a while, and if you've ever wondered why when you're driving through a large parking lot, it looks so crazy, it's node conflicts, it's obvious. <laughs> so there's one thing though. Generally, I would look for some sort of break in all these parking facilities. Here, for instance, I might like to see this coming through here with some landscaping to break this up. It's additional circulation, it's additional places uh, where we could potentially stem off the urban heat island effect. One of the reasons I like this is it allows me to continue to have this entry point right here. Over here, we are going to shuffle this one over. And I think this is probably the best location. I don't want this coming in at a corner or at an angle. So this is probably our best bet. Now that we have this in place, let's add in all of our parking and we'll try to go with the largest assets that we can after we place our accessible parking. Think of it this way. If you need accessible parking, you don't really have any other options. So if it's not available, it's really devastating. It's not like a parking stall, regular parking stall. If you don't have it and it's you have to walk the way, it's frustrating. If you need an accessible stall, you need an accessible stall. And if you don't have one, you can't really be at the business. Now, these angles here are going to be tricky. In a way that I might be able to improve them is to do something like this. So I'm trying to straighten them out. That was a lot of parking and it looks about as it should, completely empty. <laughs> so <laughs> wonderful. And you might wonder again, why so much parking? This really comes down to the businesses themselves. If you're Best Buy and you make a third of your money on Black Friday and the days surrounding it, and in those days, this entire lot is full, you are likely going to want as big of a parking lot as you can get. Same thing with the grocery store, Thanksgiving. 
Christmas, you might get most of your business. So you're going to be backed out all the way to the back here. And the last thing you want is someone to drive up to this place and say, you know what? It's not worth it for me to stop there. It's too busy. Same thing with all of these. So from their perspective, it is an opportunity cost. So if they don't have all this extra parking, they aren't going to do well in their business. So they're willing to really overdo it, which I think is a shame, but I understand. And if you look at it from that perspective, that's why it's happening. It is the situation that has existed for a long time. And as long as car dependency is such a thing in an area like this is as car dependent as it is, why would they change their ways? So that's really a, kind of the long and short as to why places like this exist. Now I keep modifying this because I'm trying to find the ideal configuration. These extra lots would be considered out lots. What I think we're gonna do is leave an empty parcel and this will be a parcel that's for sale that maybe is for sale for a long time. You sometimes see those in areas like this, but these for certain would be filled up. So I've added a couple of gas stations in here. We've got this Burger King, we've got a Culver's, we've got a McDonald's. We're gonna likely fill in this area with just pavement all the way around, something of that nature. But for the most part, this is the configuration that you might see in an area like this. We are gonna force a ton of landscaping, but we'll hold off until we detail this entire build. But for now, I wanna move on to our mid-rise residential. Now for this next section, we're gonna be placing all of the buildings manually. So remember, the constraints are that they can be no taller than five stories. They'll go along this road, maybe a bit up the side roads here, and then back in this corner as well. So I have a number of really excellent assets, but before we do any of that placement, I wanna upgrade these roads right here before we forget about them. And I wanna make this path connection. So to find our buildings, we're gonna go into find it. And we'll organize this by high density. I wanna go for only custom buildings. We have Rico and Growable is our selection criteria. And then I'm gonna go for five to eight blocks. These are larger buildings, but we may even wanna go for some bigger ones and see what we have there as well. This, for instance, looks like it could work. Actually, that might be a story too tall, but I think we have a number of options here. In particular, these mid-rise condo buildings, these are from Kloss work really, really well. So we'll likely place a number of those. And then we also have these low rise apartments, the six by fours. These are by Smiley's and there's a number of these so we can place these kind of up and down. In addition, we have some mixed use buildings and I may try to sprinkle a few of those in as well. But to begin, let's place some of these buildings from Smiley's. And I wanna keep track of this. So we have this number of times these have been used in the build. I don't wanna go crazy on these and use the same buildings over and over. But again, these fit really, really well. Now I wanna use some of these Grant Park Village assets. These are again by Smiley's, they're excellent assets. We use these over by the train in Van Buren. And it's a package of three. There is a rear, a front, and a generic. And I believe that the reason this is the case is because they can actually wrap around and you're supposed to make an apartment complex. We're not gonna do that, we'll just use them like this. Now here I want to get into something a little bit different and we have these mixed use buildings and I can sort them by by actually searching for mixed. These are again some smileys assets. And right, I've placed a few assets because I wanted to get a sense of the scale and take a look at these as well. So these are these corner pieces and I know that we have something that goes along with this. It can be challenging to figure out what these are though, particularly when they're unique and you have a lot of them up. Oh, there it is. That's way too big. So some of these we can't use in their full form, but we could potentially use it as a smaller asset like this, or we could do something like this, where we basically take these two assets and pull them together. And I think that that looks pretty awesome. And that's one of the nice things about using assets from the same author is you can have textures that are very, very similar. And both of these are Smiley's assets. And boy, oh boy, do they look great. So I'm going to pull some of these and get them to fit just right along this awkward angle. Just look at that. I mean, that looks like it is supposed to be here just like that. Now this one I placed, this is two assets and I wanted to see how tall it was. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> so way too big. And then we've got another piece right here that this is meant for an angled corner, 
but we may just go with it because we don't really have many options. And then for something like this, on this side, it's pretty flat. So obviously this side is meant to be on a road. So we could do something like this for this building and then pull this one over. This is actually meant for an angled road as well. And I may just do something like that and then send the parking back this way. That looks pretty good in my estimation. And then I found one more of these Grant Park assets. So we are gonna use another one of these. There we go. So that looks like one large building now. This one's a little off, so we can adjust that just a bit. But generally, I really like doing this. This is one of the great things about using Rico and Move It. It's just that you can really get some large feeling buildings. And then lastly, we have the spot over here and we're gonna use all the same sort of condo complex back here. And I am gonna connect in behind the Home Depot, which might not sound like the most obvious solution, but I've definitely seen this happen. It definitely stinks for those that live there, but this spot, even though it's a large parcel, has very poor access. Because right here, we're coming into a collector couplet and then right here it's too close to these intersections to basically connect in so the only reasonable way that i can see is actually to come through here and i'm guessing that this would make this a tougher sell and very likely the last place to develop around here This one was actually pretty easy to do. I just kind of ran the assets together and they ended up looking really good. I do want to use a different street though. I kind of grabbed this one temporarily, but I think that to make this feel like it's not part of a parking lot and it's part of a residential area, it's going to be really important that we switch it up and have a city looking street. That said, with this location, I could see these roads being privately maintained, which is kind of a weird situation. And one that generally when people find out that that is their situation, they aren't thrilled about it. The one benefit that folks could have by having private roads is they could be substandard. And what I mean by that is generally a city will have certain standards that all of their roads must meet in terms of width, parking, you know, other amenities. They could skirt some of those. So right here, for instance, we're just going to have this parking lot road, <laughs> which wouldn't be wide enough generally, I would assume. And then finally with this place, because of how isolated it is, we are going to need to make some pedestrian connections. The main benefit here is that it uh, allows people to leave without going through this parking lot. I could also see these roads, or these paths rather, being fire truck weight rated so that a fire truck could drive on here if there were a fire, because it's a lot more convenient for them to access this right here than driving all the way through here. And that happens all the time. So that is a lot of residential we've added to this place. Unfortunately, we did add a bit of commercial as well. And I'm concerned this right here, the Grant Park Village 3. I didn't realize that this is an office. That's not what I wanted. So I will go into the Rico settings right here. Click on this. We're going to add a local. And for this, for the service, it's going to be residential. And then I'm going to save and apply changes. Now this is a residential building. And I want this to relate somehow to the rest of the Grant Park buildings. And it looks like it's twice the size and it has twice the number of households. And there we go. We finally have some people moving in. So very happy with that solution. Again, we've got some more right here as well not the end of the world. This should be a mixed use corridor. You'd expect it to be a mixed use corridor. So I'm good with it having a mix of uses. And interestingly enough, even with all of this new residential, it's still not enough to meet the demand for all of this commercial that we just added. We're gonna have to keep building more residential throughout this entire community. But for now, I think it's time to move on to our landscaping and detailing. So for our landscaping and detailing, I think we have three separate things that we're looking at. Number one, we need to build some retention ponds, at least one. Number two, we've got a bunch of landscaping, particularly landscaping that creates a buffer in between this development and the single family, and even this development and the roads. And then third, we've got a small, lots of small details to add, such as a Walmart sign and things like that. So I wanna begin with the pond, and that's right here. I'm really concerned about the configuration of this road though, so I want to addre address that before we do anything with the pond. 
and I think that that is considerably better. So it's much easier to work with. And we've got some separation between the highway and the shopping center, which was the main concern that I had here. Now we're gonna go into landscaping and just drop this down a little bit and then we'll add water to this. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I just flooded the whole thing out. Uh, I decided to make an extra pond and I really struggled actually getting the water in here. Sometimes it happens, particularly when the ponds are really small. So that's why there's water everywhere. All that said, we should be good now. There we go, lots of vegetation to keep people out of the pond. And then I want to look for signs for these buildings. Now, I don't think we would wanna give all of them a sign, but the major anchor tenants, Walmart, Home Depot, and maybe Kroger, maybe even Best Buy, they get a sign. So for this, we'll go into find it again. We will look underneath our props, and then I'll type in the names of the businesses. And for some of these, they'll show up like this one. Now they get one sign and there would likely be a balloon study where a balloon is actually sent up because they would want to see how far away you could actually see their sign. And on the opposite end, as a city, we are gonna have very strict regulations on how high this can be and how close it can be to the right of way. So my guess is they would want the sign somewhere like this so that you could see it from both sides of the highway. But that is very close. <laughs> so I don't know that they actually get that. Maybe they get it right here. Maybe that's the best they get. And I was thinking of actually adding the Home Depot sign to this, but rather than doing that, maybe the Home Depot is more concerned about this road. So they'll get their sign right here. This one though, I could see lowering it because of the light that this could potentially cast onto these homes. So maybe we come up with some solution. It can be closer to the road, but it has to be shorter so that they can't see it quite as well. Maybe they have to put some landscaping here as well. And I think that might be it for our signs. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't really have all that many and truthfully I think it's fine I think these signs are terrible and I understand why the businesses want them but they aesthetically are just not great and I just don't feel like that's the way most people find things anymore not in an age of GPS and, and other sorts of navigation that's how people are finding things they're not just seeing a gigantic sign most of the time and going oh yeah I need to go there. <laughs> That's just not the way the world works anymore. All that said, before we add in our landscaping, I want to add a couple of assets back here. We've got a lot of residential. And even though this is a cold weather climate, there are still pools in places like this. And I saw this pool asset that made me just really want to place these around a number of apartments. And now for the apartments, I also want to add some playgrounds. So we'll make sure that there's equipment in a couple of small areas. There we go. I've added a bunch of decals here for mulch and some playground equipment. And I'm just going to take this all and paste it in front of a few of these. And I think that that's honestly pretty good. Now I want to do a little bit of surface painting, filling in some of these gaps and adding some cement where necessary. Now I think we can finally place our landscaping. Now I want to add in a row of trees down the center here. So I'm going to add in a planter prop. And I'll set these to occur every 20 meters. Then I need to shift these over towards the center. And then I want to add another rule. We're going to add a tree. And I'm going to search for a street tree. And I'm going to copy the features here. That's this button up here is copy. And that is copying the tree planter placement and I'll paste it onto the tree placement, which will make them disappear because now I turned it into a planter. <laughs> Easy enough to fix. 
and I switched it over to this Hazel Street tree. I really like the way that looks. And now I will copy this whole configuration because so that's either control shift C or just copy with this button. And now I can put that right here and I can either just hit the paste button, control shift V and hit apply or control shift B will take what's in this section and apply it to the entire road. So that is the probably the best approach because now we have it everywhere. The spacing isn't perfect. Wherever there are nodes and things of that nature, you can end up with some oddities. You can attempt to fix that by switching these to bends. Sometimes that will space it better. You can also just adjust the node and see if you can get it to be just right. And ultimately I got most of these. The other thing that you can do to try to get this completely right is to actually remove nodes that don't necessarily need to be there. So if you have a straight segment with an extra node, that extra node is throwing off your tree placement. So you may want to just get rid of it. Of course, around bends, we're kind of just stuck with what we have. And it's just a little bit of playing to get it to be just right. And this is an instance where you don't want to let perfect be the enemy of good. That isn't bad. That isn't bad at all. That was a lot of landscaping, but truthfully, I think if you want to make an area like this look realistic and look nice, you have to add all that landscaping. The hindsight being 2020, I added all these mulch rings around the trees, and this makes me wish that I would have created a couple examples of this and then just <laughs> basically copied and pasted the tree with the mulch ring at the same time. I were to do it all over again, and if you were going to do it, I would highly recommend that's how you approach it because it's just a really challenging prospect to get all these just right after the fact. And in fact, you can even see that there are places where it's just a little bit off and I'm going to have to go through and fix these off camera because there's just a lot of them. All that said, I think it's turned out pretty well. And I am very pleased with the way that this build has turned out. And I think there's just one more thing that we have to do. Take inventory of what we've done and have a brief city tour. You know, there's something beautiful about this build, even if there is way too much parking. What we're looking at is a bunch of density. It's not vertical, it's horizontal. But there's a lot of jobs here, a lot of shops here, a lot of residential here, a lot of offices. This would really be an activity center, and I would expect this to be a very important place, not just in Johnson's Creek, but in Clearwater County generally. And I've had a lot of fun putting this one together. Lots of detail. I think all the detail really brings it to life, and it makes it feel like a place that you'd actually see somewhere. And I really hope that you've enjoyed this build. If you did, please consider hitting the like button. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And before I say goodbye, I want to tell you, keep an eye on the community tab. I'm going to be posting a picture of my city that I've been building in City Skylines 2. And the next video is actually going to be a City Skylines 2 build. I'm really excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. I've had a lot of fun playing it and I can't wait to share it with you. I'll be premiering the video. So be sure to watch along with me if you can. It's going to be a lot of fun. Once again, thank you for joining me today. It's a privilege to be able to bring these videos to you. I know that you have many things you could be doing and decide to hang out with me. And I appreciate that. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next one in City Skylines too. Take care. Bye-bye.